Today we're checking out the newly launched Prism Plus Q55 Ultra TV, which runs on the Google TV OS. It's available in Australia for $899 plus delivery, and features a 55 inch 4K quantum IPS display with a 3 year warranty. Prism Plus sent me this sample TV for review, so let's start by having a look what's inside the box. We have a remote control, power cord and screws for the feet, AV cable, manual and batteries, and of course a pair of feet. The TV is not light coming in at 12 kilos. While I was able to carry it okay, I recommend getting someone to help out. Anyway, let's attach the feet to stand it up. Check your manual for which foot goes on which side as they're not the same. Once you've got the right one, it only goes on one way and needs to be secured with the screws provided. Finally, plug in the power cord at the back. At just over one meter in length, it's not very long. So if you're not near a power point, you're going to need a power extension or power board. On the back of the TV are the ports, which include AV in for the older devices and requires that AV cable to be plugged in. There's antenna for your local TV programs, dual USB 2 and 3 HDMI 2.0 ports. They also support HDMI arc for sound bars and speakers. Finally, there's optical audio out and Ethernet LAN for wired internet. This set of ports should be fine for most. It also has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth for the wireless connections. The Q55 Ultra has a 5.5 star energy rating, which is 304 kilowatt hours per year, based on 10 hours a day of daily use with the default settings. I definitely don't recommend watching the TV for 10 hours a day, but it's up to you. Build quality is good. I like that the bezel around the display is thin, and the top part of the back panel is a metal plate. There's no flex, but also gives a more premium build overall. The TV does wobble a bit with the provided feet, so if you have a child, pet, or earthquakes, the rope provided can be attached to the hooks on the back of the TV and then onto something else, like the back wall, to stop it from toppling over if it gets a hard knock. The operating system by Google supports voice control. Hey Google, what TV show do you recommend? It's a much quicker way of moving around the interface or making searches, especially if you don't have a Bluetooth keyboard connected. Typing on a remote is definitely not a pleasant experience. Speaking of the remote, it feels good with a nice heft to it. Buttons are clicky with a responsive feel, and there are four quick access buttons for Netflix, Prime Video, YouTube, and Google Play. The rest of the buttons are pretty much what you'd expect from any smart TV. Opening the battery cover is a bit more difficult than usual, but that's because you take off the whole rear plate. On the plus side, it gives you easier access to the remote if you need to clean the buttons after a spill, or when they start getting unresponsive due to buildup of debris. Chromecast is also built in, so you can mirror the display of supported Android and Apple devices. The included quantum IPS display has vibrant color reproduction with accurate skin tones. Blacks are surprisingly black for an LED screen, and if you like the saturated look, which I would say the mainstream viewers do, then this panel doesn't disappoint. For SDR content, it looks great. One very cool new feature of this TV is filmmaker mode. It disables post-processing of the image so you can experience the content exactly as it was originally intended. It can be turned on with just a few steps in the settings menu. To enable it, press the cogwheel on your remote, scroll down to picture, then down to filmmaker mode, and enable it. The TV also supports HDR 10 Plus and Dolby Vision, but you need a very bright display to get a good HDR 10 Plus experience. 1000 nits or more is recommended, and I couldn't find that information for this product. But 1000 nits is where the most expensive displays are at, and probably won't be found here. Anyway, the majority of content is still SDR, but the support is here for the future. How well it translates will depend on the content. Viewing angles are also very good, and you should be fine anywhere you choose to watch from. Call me old fashioned, but I do prefer to watch movies straight in front of the display. If you check out the product page, 
You'll see this TV isn't pitched as a gaming TV, but you can of course game on it. It's still a good bang for buck option for something like a PS5 or Xbox Series X. Once you connect your game console to a HDMI input, it should automatically switch to game mode. If it doesn't, you can find it in settings, inputs, HDMI and game mode will be there if it's supported. Turning on game mode removes post-processing of the image which reduces input lag. I found the Q55 Ultra to be responsive while playing games. Again, the input lag figure isn't mentioned in the specs, so I don't know what it is exactly. I also didn't notice any problematic ghosting issues when gaming. However, do keep in mind this TV maxes out at the standard 4K 60Hz resolution, so if you're looking for high refresh rate gaming, this isn't the right TV for you. As mentioned previously, it's powered by Google TV, which is a nice and simple to use smart OS. But there is a 5 to 10 minute setup when first launching the TV. It's best done with an Android phone, otherwise you'll be typing with the remote. Google TV allows you to add additional apps via the Play Store, so if there's a certain streaming app you need, it's all here. When it comes to audio, the Q55 Ultra supports Dolby Atmos and DTS True Surround with the dual 10W inbuilt speakers. Normally, I find TV speakers to be just bad, but these are pretty decent. You always find TV speakers lacking in bass definition, and for me at least, sound is half the experience. So I always hook up a soundbar or speaker system, but I am impressed how decent these inbuilt ones do actually sound. In standby mode, the TV uses around 1 watt of power and maximum power draw from the wall during my testing was 123 watts, which is less than the 150 watt maximum rating on the back. So overall, I was happy with the image quality, the bezel is thin, the Google TV OS works as expected, and the 3 year warranty is better than other TV manufacturers offer. It's a nice product for the dollars and should fit the needs of the mainstream. It's best suited for watching TV and streaming. While 60Hz gaming is fine, you'll need to look elsewhere if you want to go 120Hz or higher. The Prism Plus Q55 Ultra is available from the official website, which I've linked in the video description. That's all for this one, and thanks for watching. Cheers!